Okay, I'm going to show how we assemble a Kodiak, prepare it for use. Put a little bit of soap on the rotor, slide the rotor in, turning it counterclockwise until it's about an inch below this edge. Place the connecting rod in the pump housing. Slide the pump housing in, hold the connecting rod and align it so it enters the back of the rotor. It's locked in place and ready to go. Put the upper hopper on. You're ready to pump. We're going to do a little product demonstration today. We're going to pump some Sherwin Williams Ultra Crete medium texture, extra white material through the Kodiak. And we're gonna show you some of the features of the Kodiak while we do it. We've installed the pump. Uh, you can view that in another video. I'm gonna install now the hose and make the electrical connections and connect the air system to it. line is a two-prong connector. It connects here on the side of the control box. That is a low voltage line. It actually doesn't carry voltage. It is a sense line. It allows you to be in a wet environment and not uh, incur any electrical risk. Okay, so now it's ready to go. A minute ago, we installed the pump in the system. I'm going to energize the pump to make sure that the connecting rod seats. When the connecting rod turns, it will force the rotor rearwards and make the connecting rod seat. It's a pretty simple process. Come take a look at this. You can see down in the bottom of the hopper there, when I turn the pump on, it's spinning fine and the connecting rod is engaged. You don't want to run the pump dry. We just do this at this point in order to make sure the mechanism is fully functional. There is a little bit of soap residual in the stator tube that allows it to spin right now. When you're actually spraying and pumping, you want to make sure that you have material in the hopper because the material is the lubricant for the pump. Okay, when you first start a pump, it's a brand new machine, the hose is dry. So when you begin to pump, the material that goes through the hose will, it will progress through the hose in a dry hose and the head of it will tend to dry out. You can overcome that problem by wetting the hose. You don't have to put too much in. You can put just a little bit. We use a little bit of soapy water. Soap and the Kodiak are friends. It's a good lubricant. It helps the pump spin. You might hear some squeaking. Uh, what the pump doesn't like is it doesn't like any petroleum products. The stator tube is a natural shore rubber and will decay if it's exposed to petroleum products like oil or grease or WD-40. So we're going to turn the pump on now. I'm going to run the speed up to 100 get water to start coming through. I need a little more water. Okay. So now the pump is being, or the, uh, the hose is being wetted. We have plenty of water in there now. I'm going to turn the speed down. You can see that you can vary the speed from zero up to quite a stream. that you'll get 
get out of the pump depends on the viscosity of the material that you're pumping. Water is the easiest to pump. It can produce two and a half, three gallons a minute. When you start putting thicker slurry in there, it will slow the pump down. It will cause the pump to create more pressure to push it. Uh, usually you can get at least three quarters to a to a gallon and a quarter a minute out. But whatever it is you're pumping, this will pump enough to keep you busy. Very seldom do we ever have a situation where it will not produce enough output. So if you had it at 100 and you were pumping standard drywall material, you wouldn't be able to keep up with it. forcing the water out, at some point we'll start getting material flow. It's close. I think we're there.